Welcome to It's Your Case, presented by VetCT.com. I'm Amy Zaltzman, your radiologist on demand for this week. Today, we continue with our theme of don't get your gastrointestinal tract in a twist. Today's case is a two and a half year old male entire rabbit who was de dehydrated on presentation and severely hypothermic. He has generalized abdominal distension, and his blood work shows a mildly increased ALT. The clinician performed a whole body computed tom tomographic exam, but today we're going to focus on the abdomen alone. For those of you that missed my brief expl explanation previously about computed tomography, we're going to briefly review that in this image, or in these images, we're looking at two series of a soft tissue algorithm. The images on, or the series, excuse me, on the right is non-contrast or pre-contrast, and the series on the left is contrast. This series in soft tissue allows us to really focus on the distribution of blood supply to organs in a soft tissue window such that bone, as we appreciate in the vertebral column and visible portions of the ribs, are not really defined or have great detail for us, but we do appreciate that there is the beginnings of the vasculature, the interhepatic vasculature here, um, as we start to see the liver. These dark area um, above the liver is the caudal aspect of the thorax, and this is air within the lungs. But because we're dealing with a soft tissue window, we don't really have great detail within the lungs itself. And that is a sacrifice of using this type of window, which is one of the reasons we don't use this window to evaluate pulmonary parenchyma. So as we, can, as we begin to scroll caudally through the abdomen from the level of the diaphragm, we begin to start to see different organs. In the left side of the patient, and now coursing across the entirety of the patient, we see a very dilated stomach. We can see the enhancement of the gastric wall. And we see heterogeneous material within that does not contrast enhance, and that is consistent with ingesta. We see very bright structures, linear tubular structures, that were not present in the pre-contrast series, and that is consistent with a series of vessels. We start to see a larger structure in the right dorsal abdomen, and that is the right kidney. As we continue caudally, we'll start to see the left kidney as well. We also observe several tubular structures that have peripheral enhancement, and those are consistent with small intestine. And then we also have heterogeneous material filling some of those segments of the gastrointestinal tract, which in this bunny would be part of the large intestine. And then we have the caudal abdomen. Okay. So for the purposes of continuing to evaluate this patient, I've prepared what's called an MPR, a multi-planar reformat, so we can get a global picture of what's happening in this patient. And so in this MPR, we're looking at a dorsal plane, a sagittal plane, and a transverse plane. Oops, I want to blow this up a little. I've got to magnify it a little, excuse me. As we start to see, and what we've seen in the transverse images, is that this gastric silhouette is markedly dilated with heterogeneous material. We see extensive and widespread dilation of the small intestinal segments that are all filled with a similar type of material. And if we were to measure the Hounsfield units of material, and Hounsfield units is, um, an, is a numerical measurement that we use to characterize density, this would be consistent with fluid. In this area, we see a segment of intestine, unlike the others, where it tapers fairly narrowly, um, and we cannot really trace it beyond that point very comfortably. And so it cinches, and that area might prove an er um, a point beyond which all of this fluid cannot evacuate the small intestine. If we continue to scroll through this area, one of the things that we need to evaluate 
is what is the blood supply to this area? Do we feel like that blood supply is, is sufficient? So we're going to want to evaluate what the, I think I'm going in the wrong direction, yeah. So we're going to want to evaluate what does the aorta look like from the level of the cranial mesenteric artery. And we're going to want to trace those vessels as we can see them start to come down. towards this area and they arc around just a little bit, but they're not, they're still patent. We can see them without them occluding. And that's very important because we don't want to see that they're twisted. Then that would be consistent with something called a mesenteric volvulus. As we continue to evaluate these small intestinal segments, and I had traced them earlier, we know that this segment is actually contiguous with this cinched segment. And what we notice is that these areas that have pretty distinct enhancement of the margins, this wall does not have such character, such strong enhancement of the wall. And what that might tell us as the interpreter of this exam is that maybe the blood supply to the wall of this structure is not as good as it should be, um, and certainly not as equivalent as it is to the remaining portions of the small intestinal segments. We do see contents similar to the small intestinal contents in terms of fluid outside of the small intestine. And that can represent fluid within the peritoneal space or peritoneal effusion. And so our conclusions for this patient would be ileus. So in other words, we have stagnant material within the small intestine and lack of motility. And that can represent um, you know, either functional or mechanical, but we do have strong suspicion based on this cinch point that there is a component of mechanical. And then we do have to also consider the potential for vascular compromise, which may be due to intestinal torsion, as well as mild peritoneal effusion. There was additionally noted, which we didn't really discuss, segmental dilation of the portal vein. So these findings overall are very concerning for ileus. We do not see luminal obstructive material to cause a mechanical ileus. However, we do see that singe point that could represent an intestinal torsion. We don't see specific intestinal adhesion or omental entrapment, which would generally displace portions of the intestine to a different area um, that then would be expected. Nor do we see an intestinal stricture that is typically would be associated with a more chronic process when this patient has an acute history. And then we've also tracked those mesenteric vessels, which therefore we don't suspect that this patient would have a mesenteric volvulus, meaning a twist or a rotation on the axis of the mesenteric root. Paralytic ileus, such as secondary to severe enteritis, cannot be excluded based on this study. And so typically what we would recommend would be sampling of the fluid and potentially abdominal exploratory laparotomy. There is no signs of liver lobe torsion, which is another common problem in rabbits as well. Be sure to check the full report associated with this case as there are other findings in the head. Thank you for listening, and remember, it's your case, so please post your questions on social media.